<laughs> Hi you guys, this is Miss Jess from the Art Center. Um, I'm gonna show you guys how to use your art kit number three to make this woven rainbow fish today. Um, so look inside of your kit. Um, you're gonna have a giant <laughs> cutout of a fish. Um, it's gonna be really, really curly when you first open it. What I did was I actually just rolled it up in the opposite direction. It did make a few crinkles in it, but I'm not too worried about that. Um, if you don't wanna make crinkles in it, another way to do this is just gonna be to tape it down onto the table so it doesn't wanna roll up anymore. Um, on this fish, there are two sides. One of them is kind of shiny. The other side just looks like regular paper. Um, this is actually a piece of poster paper. We're going to start on the shiny side. So I want the shiny side facing me. Um, and there's a couple of steps to this project. So this is just kind of step number one. Um, the second thing you're gonna need from your art kit is your strips of construction paper. Um, I've got all the colors here and I'm gonna lay mine out in rainbow order. Um, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and pink. Now, some step, or the step that I've already done that you guys are gonna wanna do is I put a tiny little piece of rolled up tape on the back of each one of these, just a little bit because I'm actually gonna end up pulling this tape back off. Um, but what we're gonna do is flip these over and put the sticky side onto the paper because I need to trace a square around these. This is gonna help us graph out where we need to cut lines in our fish in order to make it look like a weaving later on. Okay, here's the back of my fish. So we're setting ourselves up right now to be able to do this part later. So take your time doing this. Um, once you're ready and you've got a little piece of tape on the back of each one, I'm gonna go ahead and flip them over. Um, things that I'm looking for, I wanna make sure that my strips of paper aren't extending beyond the outline of my fish, like this, for example. I don't want it to be hanging off. So by doing this, I'm making sure that I have a good square that's gonna fit inside of this shape right here, okay? Red, orange. And I am essentially putting them, I'm going nice and slow, kind of as close to each other as I can. It's okay if there's a little gap. Um, but I'm also checking to see if the tops are mostly lined up too. So top, side, bottom, turn it into a square, rainbow square. Uh. <laughs> All right. Awesome, it's a square. Okay. Now I'm going to take, if you have a pencil or a marker or a Sharpie, I'm gonna gently and carefully, slowly, uh, trace around these to make a general square shape. Um, I'm not going so close that I'm going to touch the colors of my strips of paper, um, but just kind of going around it. Doo, doo, doo. Ah. Cool. Okay. See how I sort of traced all the way around? Okay, now I'm actually gonna take these right back off. So this is why you just want a small piece of tape because you don't actually want it to stick there for too long, okay? Peel it off. And then let's get the next one. Okay. Now that I have these off, the next thing you guys are gonna need um, if you have a ruler sitting nearby, you can use a ruler for this next step. Um, I do not have a ruler sitting nearby, so I'm just gonna find something like an envelope or something that has a straight edge to sort of trace, okay? So I got my last color peeled back off, no problemo. Take that little guy off there. Okay, so now notice how my head is facing one direction and the tail is facing the other direction. Make sure that it's laying in front of you this way not up and down this way, okay? Side to side. I'm gonna take my straight edge, my envelope, my ruler, whatever it is, and I'm gonna line it up. You guys can see here. Um, this time, instead of my strips going up and down, I'm laying my envelope side to side because I'm gonna trace a straight edge. I'll show you here. My this. And then I'm gonna scoot my envelope down I don't know, maybe an inch. 
oh. and then draw another straight line. Okay, now I'm gonna move my envelope again all the way down to the other side. Um, if you want to be really exact, you can measure these out. I'm just eyeballing it right now because um, I don't, clearly I don't have a ruler, so things don't have to be exact for me. <laughs> Got all my lines. All right, looking good, moving down. Okay, as long as they're roughly the same distance apart, that's what we're really looking for. Okay, that looks good to me. That looks good to me. Maybe I'm gonna do one, one last one. Okay, now we've got it. So something like this. It almost looks like a sheet of like writing paper now, okay? Um, once you've got this step done, we're actually going to come back to this and flip it over. Um, this is the side that we're gonna paint. <clears throat> so we have a pack of Crayola paints today. Um, that came in your art kit. I am obsessed with these. I think the colors turn out beautifully. Um, you get the whole range of colors and then you can still even use this as a palette up top to mix your own colors if you want to. Um, it comes with a paintbrush so you can either use the paintbrush that it comes with or if you have another favorite paintbrush or a bigger brush you want to use. Um, since this is a rather large fish, go ahead and switch it out if you want to, um, but just know that at least it does come with, um, and it's yellow. It's a yellow uh, paintbrush. So anyways, I do have a bigger paintbrush. I'm going to grab mine and then I'm going to show you guys how to paint this. Okay. All right, you guys. So I've got my bigger paintbrush. I got my paints ready to go. I've got a container of water. If you would like to have um, a paper towel nearby, it can be helpful to um, wipe your brush on. Sometimes paint can sort of hide in your bristles. So never a bad idea to have one on hand. Um, all right, so we're gonna use these today to paint our fish. You can paint it however you want to. Um, consider that you are going to be leaving all of these strips of construction paper through the fish. So if that has any influence on how you think you wanna paint it, um, you can consider that. I think I'm going to do, I guess I'll just make another rainbow fish because I've got all the colors of the rainbow, so why not? Um, get your paintbrush nice and wet. Um, when you take it, oops, when you take it out of the water, right, you rinse it off and you take it out and it's really drippy, that's good. You can take it straight from the water and then into whatever color you wanna start with, okay? So if I'm starting with red, if you put your brush in little circles around and around, the more times that you go around in a circle, the brighter the pigment's gonna be, okay? So mine's all set here. I'm gonna do a side-to-side -side rainbow fish, starting with red. Uh, the nice thing about having a thicker piece of poster paper like this is that when you paint on it, it's not going to get super wrinkly um, or fall apart. So if you are a heavy-handed painter, you can load it up. All right. uh, if you have other kinds of paints at home, you could totally use other kinds of paints. Um, you could use markers, crayons. You could use a whole bunch of different supplies on here other than just paint if you'd want to. We are going to end up adding um, an eye later on to our fish and a smile and maybe even a top hat. <laughs> just because. Okay, so notice that every time I go to get a little bit more color, I'm adding an extra drop of water. Keep it nice and watery, almost like a little puddle in each one. That's how these work. Swirl it around. Um, be careful not to smash your brush. I know that these are kind of small paints, um, but you can really have some control of your brush, right? Being gentle with it, moving it around in a circle instead of just smashing it in. A little more water, juice it up again. Blue, rinse your brush off really well in between colors so that you don't have any, whoa, that's bright. So that you don't have any of the last color hiding in there. Do some purple last. These paints can blend together too. Um, since I've got some wet purple and some wet blue next to each other where they overlap, makes a really pretty bluish purple color. That's awesome. And then maybe on the tail, I want to repeat my rainbow. 
red, orange, rinsing it off every time. Rinse, 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 yellow, yellow, and then green, and do blue and purple. I got a little extra blue. All right. Um, here's a pro tip. When these, uh, when you're done painting with these, if there's still water hanging out in there, leave it open to dry, right? Instead of closing it, because then you'll accidentally forget that they're still wet. Flip it over and then paint gets everywhere. So I'm gonna leave mine open to dry. All right. Here's my fish, right? It's all wet. I'm gonna give this just a few minutes before I move on to the next step. All right, you guys, so I went ahead and cut out all of my lines. So now it kind of looks like, right, you've got all this space in between all these little pieces that you just cut out. So again, a good thing this is really thick paper because it's less likely to rip or break or tear as we're trying to turn it into a weaving. Um, all right, so I'm going to start with my first strip of red because I'm doing a rainbow fish. Um, with a weaving, you need to do a pattern of going in front of and behind, in front of and behind. So I'm gonna start with this strip here and I'm gonna start at the top and I'm gonna go underneath, right? I'm poking it behind my first strip, like that. Now the next one underneath it, right, this one, I'm actually going to go over the top of it because the following one, I need to go underneath just like that, and it'll pop out beneath it, here, right? So already I've done behind, in front of, behind, in front of. And you do this until it reaches all the way down to the bottom. So, in front of, can you guys see, kind of, and then behind, in front, and I'm just kind of picking it up, using my other hand to pick up the next one like that, right? Pick it up and poke it under until it reaches all the way to the other side. I'm going to scoot it all the way as far to the edge as I can that I cut. Okay, you can see what it looks like on the back. And I'll flip it back over. Now, the next one in the rainbow is going to be my orange. Since I started this one by going behind this strip, I'm gonna start by going above this strip and behind the second one. So, what I mean by that is it's gonna look a little bit more, it's the opposite, okay? So uh, instead of starting behind it, I started by putting my orange on top of and then poking it through the next one like that, okay? And I'll keep that pattern going all the way down so it'll look like almost like a checkerboard. And again, use your fingers, make it easier for yourself to pick up the strips that you need to go underneath. And on top, move underneath, on top. Okay. Cool, this is looking good. Okay, if the um, ends of your paper keep popping through like that, don't worry about that because I think the last thing I'm gonna do is actually put little pieces of tape. For example, on the back of this one, Putting a little piece of tape underneath here to keep that stuck is not a bad idea. That's something I might do at the end. So I've got red, orange, and then scoot your orange as close to the red as you can so that you have enough space for all your colors. So really take your time with this, right? Make sure that you're paying attention to what you're doing over, under, over, under, kind of alternating your weaving. I'm pulling it through picking up the strips that you need to. Right. There we go. And scoot it all the way over. And you don't have to do these in rainbow order. You can pick up a random strip and just decide to weave it in, okay? I'm gonna let you guys work on this while I work on mine, and then once I'm done, I'll show you the very final step for this fish. 
All right, you guys, so I finished weaving all of my colors through. It should look something like this when you're done, okay? On the back, like I said, if you feel like your pieces keep slipping out, go ahead and just put a little piece of tape on the back. It'll just hold them in place, okay? So that's the back of the fish. That's the front of the fish. Um, I suppose if you wanted to, you could decorate both sides and do something else on this side. Um, so anyways, I just wanted to show you a few final steps for this fish. Um, you will find in your box this silly little top hat. Um, and that's because I just thought it would be really cute if these fish could have a top hat. So you don't have to add it, or you can if you want to. Um, take out a glue stick if you have it. That's how I'm just gonna sort of stick on the last of my pieces here. <clears throat> so with this hat, I'm just gonna put glue on the very end of it, the brim of the hat, right like that, and then stick it on top. Um, to make an eye, it's up to you. You guys can just draw right onto your fish if you want to, as long as your paint's dry. I'm using a Sharpie today. Um, or if you have an extra scrap of paper, like I've got this extra white paper laying around, I can draw an eye on this and then cut it out and glue it on. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw just a big oval shape. Maybe he's looking that away. Okay. Or you can make two eyes if you want to, have them both on the same side. Use my scissors and cut this out. Okay, and then I'm gonna put glue on the back and stick it on. Be generous with your glue so that it doesn't fall off. Okay, oh, that's cute. So, there's the eye. <clears throat> Maybe the last thing I wanna do, I'm just gonna turn it towards me so I can draw a smile. Big smile for my fish. Ha <laughs> ha, he's a very happy fish. Maybe you can see part of his nose. Um, what else would I want to add? Maybe details to the tail of my fish. This fish could have long lines, fancy tails in. Okay, or whatever you want it to look like, okay? Maybe he's got another fin down here you want to draw in. <laughs> all right, awesome. Um, all right, you guys, well, I hope that you have fun with this. Take your time. Um, if you get confused, feel free to play it back again and watch a little bit slower how I do the weaving. Um, if you do create a fish, I would love to see your creations. So go ahead and share them with us on social media. Awesome, thanks guys.